Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel from Evelyn and Peter and today I have this super cozy blanket wrap to share with you guys. Um, I'm gonna stand up and give you a better view. So it's nice and oversized, loose and cozy. You have these deep um, pockets here on both sides of the front. It's got this nice side slit, very oversized openings for the arm. You're only going to do a tiny bit of joining here on the side to bring it together. Um, nice and long. I'm just obsessed with mine. I've been wearing mine around the house. It's so comfy. You can find the free pattern on my blog, enpcrochet.com. I will link to that in the description and I recommend following along with it as you um, make yours and you're watching the video tutorial. It's also available as a kit with line brand. So the kit comes with all the yarn that you need to make your blanket wrap. Plus it comes with a free copy of the printable PDF pattern. Um, so you can download that and print it out and follow along with that um, as well. And then it's also available in my Etsy shop and in my Ravelry shop. So I'll link to all of that for you guys. If you're not already subscribed to my newsletter, I recommend doing that because I always let my newsletter subscribers know first whenever I have a new pattern coming out tutorial or if there is a really good sale happening. So I always like to let you guys know if there is like a 35% off sale on the Lion Brand kits. That's always a really, really good deal. Um, if you're planning on getting yarn anyways, because you also get that free copy of the pattern as well. Um, so you can do that by heading to my blog, just pop in your email and then I just send out maybe one or two emails a month letting you guys know about all of the latest stuff with Avalon and Peter. Um, I hope you guys like this design. It is super easy to make. We're going to be making it in one big piece. So you'll start on the back of it and we'll be working in rows from the bottom up and then you'll um, continue on with one side of the front panel fasten off, join in on the other side and make the second front panel. So there's very minimal seaming in this design. You will do a couple stitches down here just to join it. And then the only sewing that you need to do is sewing the pockets um, to the panels. But if you don't want pockets, that's easily, you can skip it very easily and just continue on with the normal pattern repeat. And I'll mention that in the video as well. Um, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. It looks like a corner to corner stitch, but it's not. It's called the crosshatch stitch. So this is not worked diagonally. It's just worked in regular rows. Um, you're going to be using pound of love yarn and you need two full skeins of that. And this uses up almost the entire two skeins. So do not make any adjustments or you will have to go buy more yarn. If you're okay with that, then make sure you get a third skein of Pound of Love or if you're using a different yarn, just make sure you up your yardage because um, you only have a small, of, of, a small amount of yarn left over um, if you make it exactly how I do. So you can also use the pocket panels as a gauge swatch. So if you want to um, jump ahead and watch that, then you can and make a little gauge swatch before moving on. Other than that, I don't think there's much else to know about this. I hope you guys like it and I will catch you in the next tutorial. So for this design, you're going to need worsted weight yarn. I'm using Line Brand's Pound of Love in the color Sugar Cookie. You are going to need two full skeins of this. The exact yardage is available on my blog if you wanna check that out. You're going to need a six millimeter crochet hook, a needle to weave in your ends, a pair of scissors, and then at least four stitch markers. So we're going to be starting on the bottom of the back of this wrap. So go ahead and begin with a slip knot. And then we're going to be starting off with a long chain length. So you're going to need to chain a total of 210. So yarn over and pull through that loop on your hook a total of 210 times to create the starting chain. Now we're going to begin row one. Row one is the right side of your work, so keep that in mind. We're going to work two double crochet into the third chain from the hook. So yarn over, insert your hook into the third chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then do it a second time because we want a second double crochet in that same spot. I like to work my stitches in the back bump of my starting chain, but you can do it however you prefer. Those skip chains at the very beginning also count as one double crochet, so keep that in mind. Next, we're going to skip over the next three chains, so count out three chains right after your double crochet, skip over them, and then work a single crochet into the chain directly after that. So we skipped three and then worked a single crochet, and now we're going to chain three, so yarn over and pull through a total of three times. 
And now we're going to work a double crochet in this chain right after that. So we have a single crochet, chain three, one double crochet, and then a second double crochet into the chain after that one, and then a third double crochet into the following chain. So that is what we're going to be repeating across the row is the single crochet, chain three, three double crochet with that skipped three chains in between. So this counts as one square. You'll notice in the written pattern, my stitch count goes by squares. That first one is just kind of like a half square, so it doesn't count. This one that we just did will be our first full square. Skip over the next three chains, work a single crochet, chain three, and then three double crochet for your second square. So I only count the full squares in the stitch count. You'll have those two double crochet in the chain in the beginning, and then the when we finish the row, we'll end with a single crochet, but those do not count as the square count. Um, I just found it easier to count by full squares for our stitch count in the pattern to make it easier on everyone. So now we have our three double crochet and we're just gonna continue repeating this across the row. So again, skip over the next three chains, single crochet, chain three, and then three double crochet to create our square and just repeat all the way to the end. And I'll meet you at the end and show you how to finish off once you have four chains remaining. So I have four chains left here. I'm going to skip three and then work a single crochet in the final stitch. So if you were to count your squares, you just count each little peak um, within the row to make sure you have the correct count. You should have a total of 29 full squares, plus you'll have those three double crochet at the beginning, and you will also have a single crochet at the end. So now for row two, this is what we're going to be repeating throughout the rest of the pattern. So chain three, this does count as your first double crochet, so keep that in mind. And then work two double crochet into the same stitch. And now we're going to start our first full square here. So to do that, it's very similar to row one, except now we're skipping over the next three double crochets instead of chains. So skip over the double crochets and in that very first chain space, you'll see the big gap. That's where you'll be working your stitches. So insert your hook into that chain space and work one single crochet and then chain three. So it'll bring your stitches down and kind of pull them forward to make it, give it that zigzag look. So after you chain three in the same chain space, work your first double crochet, and then in the same space, work a second double crochet. And now your third double crochet will go into the top of the single crochet right after the chain space. So you have a single crochet in the chain space, chain three, two double crochet in the chain space, and then a third double crochet into the single crochet right after it. And that section right there is what we're going to be repeating across the row. So again, you'll skip over those double crochet stitches, work a single crochet into the chain space, and then chain three, and then two more double crochet into that same chain space. And then finally, you'll finish with your third double crochet into the top of the single crochet directly after that chain space. And that's the stitch throughout the entirety of the pattern that creates our little square. So you'll just repeat this all the way across the row, skipping the three stitches, single crochet, chain three, two double crochet into the chain space and double crochet into the single crochet. When you get to the end of the row, you'll have our three double crochet here at the end. Remember our um, turning chain right at the beginning counted as our first double crochet. So you're going to work your final single crochet into the top of that chain. And each row here after also your, your chains at the beginning count as your first double crochet. So work your single crochet into the top of that chain. And then we're just gonna be repeating row two over and over and over again throughout the back panel. The, your square count will stay the same and you will just be doing the same thing over and over. So chain three, remember that does count as your double crochet. So when you get to the end of the row, you're working your single crochet into the top of that chain three. 
um, and then these squares are the same here as they were in row two. So you can go back and watch row two if you need to, and you're going to be doing a total of 53 rows before we're going to begin splitting the neckline, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So after you complete row 53, make sure you turn your work, and now you're going to take your first stitch marker, starting on the right-hand side of your work with our first single crochet, count out 14 single crochet stitches. So you're gonna count from right to left over 14 stitches, and in that 14th single crochet stitch, place your first stitch marker, then continue counting out, and when you reach your 18th single crochet, place your second stitch marker. So my first one is in single crochet 14, and then I'm gonna continue over 15, 16, 17, and in that 18th single crochet, place my second stitch marker to mark off the neckline. So in the 14th single crochet and the 18th, 18th single crochet, counting from right to left. So now that you have your stitch markers placed, you're going to work row 54 just as you normally would um, and work your squares across the row just like normal like you have been throughout the entirety of this wrap and you're going to stop once you get to that first stitch marker. So I'm going to go ahead and work up my squares and then I will show you what to do once you reach your stitch marker. Okay, so I'm coming up to my final square just before my stitch marker, and I'm going to finish the row by working one single crochet into the top of that chain. So instead of working into the chain space, I'm just going to work a single crochet into the top of those three chains, just like you would do at the end of a normal row. So we're going to pretend this is the end of the row, and in that top chain of those three chains, I'm going to insert my hook and work a single crochet. So this single crochet is the end of our row now, so that's where we will be working our first stitches into for this next row. So go ahead and chain three, turn your work, and now for row 55 through 85, you will once again be repeating row two. So you can see I'm just working two double crochet into that stitch like normal, and then I'm going to continue on with my squares just like I have been throughout the rest of this row. When you get back to the end on this side, you will finish with your final stitch into the top of the chain three, just like normal. So now our rows are exactly the same, just shorter. So we've just split it and now we're creating the front panels here. So it'll be the exact same, they're just not as wide because we have split off to our first front panel. So go ahead and work rows 55 through 85, and then in row 86, we'll be, we will be creating the pocket opening. Okay, so now we are in row 86, and we're going to create the opening for the pocket. If you do not want pockets, you can just skip these instructions and continue working your row repeats as normal um, for a total of 106 rows before fastening off. If you do want the pockets, start off this row like normal, chain three, two double crochet, work a single crochet in that first chain space, and then chain three, work two double crochet into the ch same space as well, and then a double crochet into the top of the single crochet. So we have our first square complete. And then we're going to work one more square, work a single crochet into the following chain space, then chain three, then two double crochet, and then your final double crochet into the top of the single crochet. So we have our little half starting square plus two full squares, and now we're going to create a long chain um, to create the opening of the pocket and join back in on the other side of our front panel. So you're going to chain a total of 56. So yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook a total of 56 times. Make sure you're not doing your chains um, too loose here. You want to just do work your chains and keep your tension um, nice and even. You don't want loose floppy chains for this part. 
Once you have a total of 56 chains, you're going to count out the next eight chain spaces and you're going to skip over those eight chain spaces and then into the following chain three space. So in the ninth chain three space, you're gonna join back in with a single crochet. So skip over eight and then in that ninth one, insert your hook and work one single crochet stitch and then you're just going to continue on with your squares like normal. So after your single crochet, just chain three, work two more double crochet into that same spot, and then a third double crochet into the single crochet right after that. And then you'll have one more square to make before you finish the row. So again, it's the same as it's always been, it's slip single crochet over into the next chain three two double crochet into it a double crochet in that last single crochet and just finish your row like normal with your final single crochet stitch into the top of the chain three so now this is what your pocket opening will look like it'll your chain length will be loose and floppy but once we work the following row it'll tighten up like normal to finish the pocket hole opening so row 87 is going to start off just like any other of the rows. You're going to begin with a chain three and then two double crochet into that first stitch. And then you're going to work your first square into the following chain space and then repeat it one more time for a second square. So we're going to have two full squares and then we're going to start working our stitches into the chain length of the pocket opening. Okay, so once you get to the chains, you're going to treat it just like you did in row one. So instead of skipping over the three double crochet, you're just skipping over the three chains instead, just like we did in row one. So after that second full square, you have your first three chains here, skip over them. And in that fourth chain, work a single crochet stitch. And then chain three, and then work three double crochet one into each of the next three chains so just like we did in row one and it's the same thing that you've been doing except um, we are working into chains now instead of into the chain space um, and we're skipping over the three chains instead of skipping over three double crochet stitches. So it's just like what you did in row one. And you're just going to repeat this all the way across the opening of the pocket. So again, skip over three chains, single crochet, chain three, three double crochet, repeat across, and I will show you how to join back in on the other side to complete the row. Okay, so now we have worked our way across um, the chains of the pocket hole opening, and now we're back to the other side. We have we finished with our three double crochet in those last three chains. Now you're going to go back into our regular squares by single crochet into the next chain space, chain three, two double crochet into that chain space as well, and then a double crochet into the top of that single crochet. And then just repeat that one more time and then finish the row with a single crochet into the top of the turning chain at the end. So now this is what your pocket opening will look like and we're back to having the same amount of squares as we have had for the previous rows on the front panel. Um, and now you're just gonna go right back into repeating row two. So we're starting row 88 here. So for rows 88 through 106, just continue repeating row two, just like you have been in all of the previous rows and that will complete our first front panel. So once you have 106 rows, you can go ahead and fasten off that first front panel. And now we need to go back and do that same thing all over again on our second front panel. So now with your garment out in front of you, with your front, with your finished front panel on the right hand side, we're going to take a new piece of yarn and join into that set, second stitch marker that we placed earlier into the back panel. So you can see on this finished one, um, our last stitch was into that top of the chain three just before the stitch marker. And now with a new piece of yarn, we're going to join in our yarn into the actual single crochet where our second stitch marker is placed. 
So go ahead and take your new piece of yarn, put your hook into that same spot where your stitch marker is, join with a slip stitch, and then you can go ahead and chain three, which counts as our first double crochet, and then work two double crochet into the same spot um, as the chain three and the join. So this is just like starting any other row. We have our chain three and two double crochet, and now we're going to work a single crochet into that first chain space, chain three, and then two double crochet into the same spot with a double crochet into the single crochet as well. So that was our first regular square, and now we're just back into working our stitches across like normal. So the only thing that we did was join in with a slip stitch where our stitch marker was, and that is the start of our row. The chain three is our very first stitch of the row here for the second front panel. These four squares in between these stitch markers, you will leave them unworked. That is the back neckline, and we will be adding a trim around it later on, but you won't be working any stitches in between those um, besides the trim later on. So now that you've joined in, you can go ahead and work this second front panel like normal. It's the exact same as the first one that I have already showed you. So if you need to, you can go back and rewatch it, but it'll be the exact same thing with the pocket hole opening be, being at row 86 and then row 87 is where you work into the pocket chains, and then you'll be doing a total of 106 rows on this side as well. So this is the exact same as the first front panel. Um, you can go ahead and rewatch if you need to, and if not, I will meet you back here after I have completed this side. So now you need to work two pocket panels. These are exactly the same. You're going to chain 63 for your starting chain and then work rows one through 18, just as you did to start this wrap on the back panel. So if you forget how to start, you can go back to the beginning of this video and rewatch rows one through 18 um, to create the pocket panel. Again, it's just row one is the same as the beginning of the video and then row two is the same and then you just repeat row two for rows three through 18, and then you need to make two. And when you fasten off, make sure you leave a long tail for sewing all four sides to your wrap. Now we're going to add trim around the opening to the wrap. So I have my piece right side facing up and with a new piece of yarn, I'm just going to join in to the inner bottom corner of the front panel. I'm going to work single crochet stitches up the side along the back neckline and down the opposite side. You're going to add trim on the outer sides of your piece as well. So before you do these seams to join the uh, panels together, you're going to join in your yarn and just single crochet evenly from one end to the other, not along the zigzaggy rows, just on the straight edges on both outer sides of your wrap. So you can do that on both sides. And then once you have the trim added in, we're going to fold our piece together and add in these stitches here. I accidentally forgot to film this part, but I'm going to explain how to do it. So you're going to fold your back and front panels together with the right sides facing. Again, the right sides are row one. When you're looking at row one, that's the right side. So just fold it together and you're going to fold it so that the back panel overhangs further down than the front panels by about six inches. That way the back of our cape hangs down lower than the front. So I have it about six inches hanging down and then it's just evenly placed together. So you can see it's about six inches longer on the back. And using your measuring tape, again, from the bottom of the back panel, so the one that's hanging down further, just measure out about 16 to 18 inches, and then we're going to place a couple stitch markers. So I placed a stitch marker at the 18th inch point and the 16th inch point, and then you're just going to seam in between those two stitch markers together. You can single crochet them together or slip stitch them together, or you can use your needle and sew. Some, so from inches 16 to 18, just seam together. It'll only be a couple inches, and you will do this same thing on the other side as well. 
So here's my other side. Again, the back panel is hanging down further than the front. And then from inches 16 to 18, I just did a quick little seam to join it together. And that creates the armhole opening um, as well as the long deep slit along the bottom of your wrap. You can do this after you sew the pockets in or before, it doesn't matter. But now I'm going to show you how to add in those pockets as well. So now we need to sew in our two pocket panels to the inside of our wrap. So this is the wrong side of my wrap here on the front panel. So our pocket panels will be sewn on the inside where they are hidden um, and you can't see any of the sewing on the outside. You wanna lay your front panel flat, kind of close that gap together before you start sewing. And then you're going to take row one of your pocket panels should be lined up with about row 84 of your front panel. So because we did bottom up from this panel and so we're kind of working from top to bottom of the front panels, you want your rows to be facing the same direction. So row one should line up with row 84, which is not the one just above the opening of the hole, but the row above that one. So it does not have to be perfect, but you wanna kind of try and line it up so that those squares um, match as you're sewing it together. And then the last row, row 18 of your pocket panel will be closest to the um, end of the front panel. It won't go all the way down. You'll have a few inches there at the bottom without the pocket. Um, it stops right before that, but you should have it the same direction. Um, and this does not have to be perfectly placed, but to help you keep it as even as possible, I recommend placing as many stitch markers as you need to keep everything um, nice and secure as you sew it on. Um, so I ended up placing one in each corner plus placing a few, um, every few squares or so just to make sure everything was staying together and not, um, coming apart as I go. I wanted everything to line up evenly. So I really recommend doing that here as well. Sewing the pocket panel on is not complicated. You just are going to take a needle and then the tail of yarn that you left on your panel and you wanna sew all four sides down. So I just have my needle and I'm going to start seaming up the first side here. Um, I did the invisible join method. You can use any stitch that you prefer, any sewing method you prefer, um, mattress stitch, however you like to sew your pieces, um, you can do that here. My tip is to make sure when you're putting your needle through that you're only picking up the stitch, the side of the stitch that is closest to you. You do not wanna stick your needle all the way through to the other side, or you'll be able to see your seam on the front of your work. Um, so just try and keep it um, your needle and your yarn running through only um, the inside of your work and don't poke it all the way through as you go. So my tail was quite long. You probably don't need your tail to be as long as I did, but I would do a handful of stitches and then pull all the way through to kind of make it go a little bit quicker as I went. Um, so you'll just evenly stitch up that first side when you're working along the top. You will sew it to row 84 like I pointed out before. Make sure you are not sewing the hole closed. This is not meant to sew the front of the hole closed. It's just along the back. Once all four sides are sewn, I went back and I added a little bit of stitches to the corners of the pocket opening. So um, both on the left and the right hand side, I stitched in about one inch. So I flipped my work inside out, I turned the pocket inside out and I sewed the top of the pocket hole opening and the bottom of the pocket hole opening. I seamed them shut about one inch, you can see here, and I just used my hook and I slip stitched across. Um, this just helped give the pocket a better shape. Um, you don't have to do this part, but I just felt like it held the pockets closed a little bit more and kept them from flopping um, open. They were flopping a little bit more than what I would like. So I just seamed it over about an inch. So you can do that as well. Really simple to do. I did it on both sides. Once you have this pocket panel sewn on, make sure you go and do it to the other side as well. 
Once your pockets are sewn on, you can just weave in any remaining ends and that is it for this design. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.